Hello, I'm Sam from Jessup Says. The focus of my channel is to share and educate on how to buy less, buy better. It's not necessarily about buying less things, it's about buying something that fits its purpose perfectly and serves you for as long as possible. Today, as promised, we are going to look at one of my earliest purchases from Private White VC, and probably the piece that got me so interested and invested in Private White as a brand. That is, of course, my brown belted safari jacket. Sadly, unlike most of my reviews, this garment hasn't been produced by Private White for a few years, so the web page that originally held all the information, the details, and everything no longer exists. What we can talk about is my experience to date, how I wear it, and of course, the review of how it's lasted over the last three years or so. But let's start with a question. Why does men's outerwear have to be so confusing? I mean, I have a warm coat, a rain coat, and sure, both of those make sense, but what about the other 50 or 60 or 70% of the time where it's not that cold and it's not that warm and it's a little windy and maybe a little rainy, but not raining. It's just sort of an average day. Well, over the last two years, excluding of course my informale work shirt, my answer has been my belted safari jacket from Private White VC. Like I said, the information doesn't exist online anymore. I even tried the Wayback Machine, if anyone knows that what that is, but I had no success finding the exact details. So these details are more what I can tell you about the garment, not rock hard facts as we usually like to discuss. I have used the current version of this jacket, which Private White call the Cotton Safari Jacket, as a reference point to you know make sure that we're sense checking all the information, but it's not the exact same jacket, so it's just a close enough version. So it is of course the Belted fire jacket in the color brown and it is made in Manchester. The material is 100% cotton, we can assume, and we can also assume that it is woven, dyed and sourced from Britain or the UK, probably. The construction features four button front closure, so we've got one, two, three, four, and then we also have this other one that gets it really nice and high. The entire garment is unlined with bound internal seams like we discussed in our last video. There are two lower bellows pockets. So these ones here have a bellows, which is basically just this ability to sort of expand this little section just here. And then the two breast pockets are flaps, but no bellows. On the back, there is a thing called a action back pleat, which adds comfort and flexibility. There are epaulets with buttons on uh, both shoulders and the cuffs are fully working and they feature a single button. The entire garment has been stitched together with quarter inch twin needle stitching, which is sort of makes it a little bit more rugged and work weary looking. All the buttons are actually British made. And of course, as with everything from Private White VC, there are the copper rivets on the back with the little locker room loop there as well. Very cool. It did come with a detachable belt that has a leather buckle as well, which is the main thing that separates this from the current safari jacket on offer. They describe the fit as being regular. I'm wearing what they refer to as a size three, which is the equivalent of a small. I find that in general, Private White stuff runs a bit large. So I'm typically between a three or a four, which is a small or a medium. We'll discuss that in a bit more detail soon. The cost was $630 according to the invoice that I have. And I think that was likely on sale from a memory, but I'm not 100% sure. The current Safari Jacket is also on sale. So a really good pickup if you're interested in the style. We know a bit about the Private White history from the last video. It's a company that's been producing for a long, long time and at a very, very high quality. They produce coats for both the First and Second World War. As such, it's kind of interesting that today we're discussing a safari jacket which has its origins tied up with the British military and the soldiers in the South African War in the 1900s. Compared to the climate in Britain, Africa was a completely new environment for these soldiers. Most had never experienced anything like before. There was a need to trade in those woolen coats and jackets for clothing that was more lightweight and breathable whilst also being combat ready. For practical purposes, these safari jackets typically featured four large bellow pockets, much like this one does, uh, two on the chest and two on the waist. And from a design perspective, they featured a large t-shirt like collar, shoulder epaulets, and a belt on the waist. All these design elements clearly remain today and it's easy to see why they have lasted the test of time. 
But how did it keep the soldiers cool? Well, it did so by being constructed out of a material called cotton drill, which has been used widely throughout history for those people requiring clothing that needs to last a long time. The fabric itself is a twill weave, which makes it incredibly strong and resistant to wear or ripping. It's typically of a medium to heavyweight fabric and one of those fabrics that undoubtedly gets better with wear like a denim does. So speaking of my private white jacket, they have also used a cotton twill, uh, though I can't be exactly specific as to where exactly the fabric has been made or the you know composition of the fabric. The safari jacket that they sell today is made from 100% cotton twill, which is woven in Huddersfield, which is another UK brand that supply very high, high quality fabrics. I imagine the fabric is very similar to that, but I can't be sure. In terms of the fabric itself, it's probably a mid to lightweight fabric in terms of like the heft and the thickness of it. It's really, really good for three seasons because of that. It's probably not the best at keeping you really, really warm on a super cold day, but on a warm or mild day, it's basically the perfect pick. It's also quite wind resistant, more than the WS50 from Informale. Similarly to that WS50, the fabric has sort of a mold skin like texture. It's very soft and almost sort of suede like is the best way I can sort of describe it. It's a very nice fabric and I'd say that over the last two years it's gotten even softer if that's possible and it's also maybe lightened a little bit over that time. The color is still a very nice brown but it's maybe more of a mid chocolatey brown and it started off a more sort of mid dark chocolatey brown if that makes sense. It's a very versatile color, very easy to wear and a very comfortable fabric so that also makes it easy to wear. So as I mentioned earlier, this garment is a small, but it probably fits me more like a medium light. It's perfect for wearing a light layer or a rugby shirt or an OCPD, but it doesn't fit a thick knit and leave me room to, you know, move as well. Not ideal if it's super, super cold, like we said before. The arms are actually a really, really good length and the fit overall is pretty much perfect, but it is a neat fit. It's not like a roomy fit. I guess because I'm a shorter guy, it's probably the right size for me because I think the medium probably would have been a bit too long, uh, definitely in the arms and in the body, and maybe a bit too roomy as well. So the way I am ended up using this jacket is more like a middle weight layer, and I think it's very, very comfortable, and I really, really like the fit in that context of being a mid weight layer. Private white sizing can be a bit challenging, and it seems that I'm probably between sizes because I have a large chest and I'm a short guy. As such, the way I think about it is if it's going to be close to my body, I go to small and if it's going to be outer, outer wear, then I go to medium. So if you find yourself in a similar position, that's what I would probably suggest. The fit is overall the one thing that lets private white down because personally, I'm just between sizes. It's not their fault, it's my problem. My chest just continues to grow too much gains and all that, I suppose, but yeah, it's a bit frustrating. Luckily, for me, they include this action back, which is basically just a set of very, very deep pleats that allow the back to expand and allow movement. It's honestly a real lifesaver and it makes the fit really, really good and perfect for my use case. Now let's discuss pockets. I realize I might have an above average interest in pockets, but this doesn't really make them any less versatile. I'm not James Bond, nor am I Batman that you know of, but I do tend to carry around quite a few things in my, well not utility vest, but my safari jacket. The pockets are bellows pockets, which means that they can expand quite significantly and accommodate fairly large items. It was originally designed for carrying things like bullets and knives and binoculars and maps and even safari hats as well well as a cigar or two. So really the options with these pockets is pretty much endless. The collar is fairly wide and spreads nicely across the chest. Part of the original design that keeps the wearer cool in the hotter weather, which Australia sometimes is. Also the collar can protect the wearer from the wind and the rain when done right up. You know, this one and then even this one, really nice and snug, really well protected. So it's a very versatile collar. Being able to be done up that high also allows for it to be a very, very good protective layer on those colder days. But it also allows it to be used like a 
you know, suit lapel or a work shirt collar as well. So it's a very versatile collar. The belt around the waist is there to ensure that everything stays in place. When these original combat men were walking across difficult terrain, they wanted everything to, you know, stay nice and comfortable so that they could walk carrying all their bullets and things. Comfort is an important part of the practicality of this design. In the updated cotton safari jacket, they've actually removed that design. It seems to be the only thing that they've changed. And to be honest, over the last 12 months or so, that's how I've been wearing it anyway, without the belt. So I think they probably made the right call, as I'm not often carrying around heavy bullets and things, I suppose. Bit of a different use case. The design itself is packed full of other handmade little details, as we expect from Private YBC. The construction, again, is completely unlined, though the actual pockets do have a lining, so that's quite nice. And the internal seams are all completely bound which means they will last basically forever. As we discussed in the last episode, all these little details add time and cost to the overall garment, but it's a quintessential part of what Private White VC do and a hallmark of their quality and expertise in manufacturing these high quality garments. Moving to the outside of the jacket, there are a plethora of things to, to notice. All the buttons are of course that British made horn. They're really, really nice, They're nice and thick. They have sort of nice colors on them. And these are present all over the jacket for closing basically everything, including the epaulets and the pockets and the belt actually gets strapped and fastened with a little button. Another thing you might notice when you're looking this closely is that the stitching is quite noticeably the twin needle stitching, which helps makes it look a little bit more rugged than a single needle or a single row of stitching might. It adds to the overall military aesthetic. So there's clearly a bit of a military aesthetic to this jacket, it's a safari jacket, but how do I wear it? Because I guess I'm not in the military. Well, first of all, the color is a nice mid-brown, as we mentioned earlier. This means that it pairs fantastically with pretty much everything that navy does. In the way that I view color, I sort of see navy and brown, or a nice quality brown, as being sort of identical in terms of how they can be worn and stuff. This should make it easy, if you've never owned anything in a brown, to consider what you might want to pair with it and I'd strongly suggest that you do get something in brown because it's a great color to wear. Similarly to the Informale WS50, this has been a very high wear garment. I don't find it as versatile in the lower end of formality that I do the WS50, but I find that it's equally good, if not better, in the more formal occasions. The style and design may be a bit more elegant and sort of styled or fitted, and the WS50 is designed to be more like a workwear garment, so a little bit more boxy in its fit. I often wear it with a t-shirt, as I am today, either a white one or a navy one, combining on the bottom with either a pair of light wash indigo jeans or even a white jean or just a plain pair of indigo jeans. I'd probably wear a pair of loafers in this or maybe boat shoes depending on the day or even a white sneaker. Though I find that the Alden LHS in brown suede pops really, really well with this brown jacket and I really like that sort of combination. They sort of share a similar visual texture. The jacket also works over a pair of more military inspired trousers like the pair that I own from Nami Man, though you have to want to really like embrace that sort of commando style. The same can be said for a proper pair of chinos, either of which you could pair with like a nice commando boot if you really wanted to go like all the way into that sort of military look, or again, a pair of loafers or boat shoes will look pretty awesome, I think. If you wanted to dress the outfit up even more, go into that more formal style, then you can of course add an OCBD or a shirt. It does fit a thin merino, sort of like a mock neck or anything like that if you wanted to but I find that I probably would pick a different outerwear combination if it was going to be a very, very cold night. Again, I'd wear the OCBD with a pair of denim. Any of the colors that you own are going to work pretty well here. I don't really have much of a need for a suit trouser these days, and in Australia, it's currently too warm for wool pants, but if you wanted to, they go really, really well with wool pants. As for colors, it works great with gray or even green flannels or cream flannels even. Hopefully it's clear now that brown is a super useful and super easy to wear color. And the safari jacket itself is super useful and super easy to wear. This is probably my second most worn piece of outerwear, and it was my most worn for quite a while. Private White make extremely high quality garments, and this one has been made to last. Over the last three years or so, this garment has gotten better and better each time I put it on. It's a garment that's quality and usefulness has led me to a few more purchases from the brand, and I highly suspect that there will likely be more of those in the future, because this stuff really does last a lifetime, and it is worth investing in. Anyway, thanks very much for watching. Links are in the description as always, and I look forward to seeing you all in the next one. Cheers.